Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some magic cards which have hit all time lows. Which means if you wanted these cards, now would be the time to get them or you could wait a little bit longer. So let's go over what they are. Surprisingly, they are land. And that's why I wanted to make this video because land, since the dawn of magic, people have said, invest in real estate and when they mean invest in real estate they mean invest in mana bases and land will always always hold their price their premium price that is no longer true and i will show you a few examples and explain what is going on so judge promo island which was a 200 plus dollar card at one time is now 156 you get on eBay for slightly less. I think 145 is what I saw it at by now uh, with shipping. The, the point here is there's not enough copies of it. Like, yes, it's a one of, but even EDH, like who plays one island in their entire deck? Maybe there is some deck. I know a commenter will be like, oh, well, what about this random deck that it's tier five and no one's heard of? And that plays one island. Yeah, that random tier 5 rogue deck is not going to want this island because it's probably more than their entire deck. So let's take a look at the price graph. Started at 200, hit about 100, went back to 200, and now it's 150. You might ask, okay, so if it is at the 100 point, isn't that the lowest point it was at? You couldn't really buy them for 100. There were just none that you could get. So 156 and dropping is where it currently is. So if you wanted to get this land, now would be the time to get it. Is it beautiful? Yes. Is it beautiful enough to warrant what's the multiplier on a regular foil land? I mean, some foil lands are very, let's take a, a full art foil land from Amaket. That's what, $2, $3, $5? This is a multiplier of 35 plus. It's a heavy multiplier. Now, some people like this stuff. Some people like the pimp version of it. They like to have the most expensive island in the game. But in my opinion, if you have disposable income and that's what you want to do with your income, then go ahead. But this island does not do anything to make your deck better. So for the entire price of most standard decks right now, you can get one island. And I've seen a decline. So older cards are going up, but I'm seeing a decline in newer versions of cards that are considered pimp. Arid Mesa, it's $102 now. It started at over 200, it looks like 250, 260, and now it's probably gonna dip below $100 very soon. You might ask, isn't this the uh, nicest version of it? I don't know. It's up to the eye of the beholder. We have another foil version of it from the Modern Masters 2017. Some people might like that one better because it doesn't really have the Hedrons, right? The Hedrons always have been kind of mad to me. I don't really know what to say about these specialty lands. These foil specialty lands have been dropping ever since Eldritch Moon. And it is one of the things that we I look at and it kind of makes sense. It kind of doesn't make sense. But I feel like Magic players are becoming more conscious of how much money they are spending. Just because of the amount of product that is being pushed out. There used to be this idea from many of my locals that you could collect all the expeditions. Or all the masterpieces. That is gone. No one has money to collect all of them. Just not going to happen for the ordinary collector anymore. Even Polluted Delta, and I want to take this as another example. Polluted Delta was not reprinted, but that has not stopped its decline from 300 plus dollars, almost 400, to below to 181. Beautiful piece of land. I like it. Not as visible hedrons. I don't even see any hedrons, but I'm, I'm sure that there are some hedrons somewhere. I love this, how it looks, but, big but, 
they did have a pseudo reprint in Standard Showdown, and given what we've seen with the Expedition art, it is possible we see the artwork in a regular border in the future. And that may be a future Standard Showdown or a future Magic event of some type. The artwork that they created just for Expeditions and Masterpieces, they can reuse however they feel like. And they have done that with the Battle for Zendikar lands. And that is why these are going down. It's because it's not unique anymore. Yes, Polluted Delta has not been, the art has not been reused. Oh, I, haven't, I don't know if it has, I assume it has not. I have not seen it anywhere. But in the next magic event, maybe Polluted Delta with this artwork in the regular frame becomes a promo. Twilight Mayor. Now, the interesting part about this is how expensive the regular Twilight is. The Twilight is pretty close to this price. Twilight Mirror is considered one of the better. Uh, I forget what these lands are called. There's so many. Filter lands? Yeah, filter lands. It's one of the better ones. And it sees some play, maybe some fringe play in Death Shadow. I've seen it in some deck list, but not in the Tier 1 Ultimate deck list. So it's a card that is playable, but it's plummeting in price. It just has not recovered. None of these cards have recovered. The Judge promos have not recovered since that initial spike. The Expeditions and most of the Masterpieces have just been on a steady trend down. There are very few Masterpieces that have trended up. I can count them on my fingers. And I know which ones they are because I'm watching them. I want to know, I just want to know, lands are the most important thing in Magic. They are the most important card in EDH, so they're the most important card in Modern. Every format, you need lands, right? There was this concept a long time ago that every piece of land will eventually go up in price. The Zendikar, starting from the Zendikar fetch lands, to the shock lands, to the ally fetch lands, to... That's no longer fact. You do have some of them that go up in price until the next reprint. And then you have other ones that just continue. As you see the chart, these are the high-end premium whale products. In mobile games, it's called a whale product where actually I, I pay more for a Fire Emblem character. Like It's kind of embarrassing. I'm not going to go over this again. But these products are meant to have the whales buy the product and then they would subsidize the rest of the set you guys laughed when i say oh this is how mobile games are and this is how it is but isn't a masterpiece subsidizing the rest of the play base but what if those whales don't want this then you're in trouble every mobile game relies on its whales magic the gathering is relying on its whales to buy this product that is considered premium quotation mark but the premium product has no long-term value. It has just trended down and down and down, and there's nothing left. There is not a left. So I don't know what to say, except I have no interest in these long-term. I have no interest in them at all. Some of the artwork, I feel like people said were good because they wanted it to be good. Now, okay, another card here is a Chroma. I wanted to mention a Chroma a little bit from the Vault Angels. From the Vault, I don't know what's happening here. We haven't really got it from the Vault in a while. And from the Vault itself has a different artwork. It has premium artwork. It has, this is what people consider premium. It is, oh, this very beautiful piece of artwork. Not anymore, not anymore. So all the basics that MTG Finance in 2000 and uh, let's, I'm trying to remember when I was in Richmond in 2010, all the basic concepts of MTG Finance then buy lands, buy alternative artwork, which is you know the Jace counter spell, which at the time was like twenty dollars, which is very good for a counter spell. Buy any anything with a picture of Jace in it. Buy it. And that was the principle, buy unique artwork, buy unique cards, 
and buy the highest premium item you can get your hands on. All of that has changed. And I don't know, what, it's not like it's reprinted. It's not like it reprinted this Acroma with the artwork. That's not affecting its price. It's just that there's too much. There's just too many things to buy. There's too many anthologies. There's too many dual decks. There's too many commanders. There's too many sets coming out. One after another, after another. And there's a constant boom, 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 boom. Finally, this is the modern masters version of Tamagoyf. Yes, you have seen it. It is about $100 now. This card hit $200. Vendors were buying it out like crazy in G the last GP Vegas and the Modern Masters GP Vegas. It's just cardboard. And I feel more and more people realize that. Among my friends, people play Overwatch. We play Mario Kart. What are we playing right now? I'm playing Fire Emblem. I'm the only one. I'm still playing Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is having an event in Chicago. I'm going to buy tickets for it for my significant other and I because he plays it as well. And my friend Kobe plays it with his wife. We're going to get tickets. There are other options to spend money, right? And every single mobile app wants me to spend more and more money. Every single thing wants me to spend more and more money. And the reason these prices are going down is simply because there's too many. There's too many Tamagoyfs in the market. It finally has deflated a the price. There's too many products. And there's not enough money to go around. So what's going to get hit first? Premium products, of course. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.